Okay, so the question is, um, are, employments con are employment contracts required to be notarized? So that is actually a, uh, an interesting question. Almost in all companies out there, whether in the private sector or even in the government service, employment contracts are usually notarized. That is why uh, many people think that employment contracts should be notarized. Now, let me first explain to you um, the rules when it comes to contracts for you to understand the answer. And of course, I want you to learn more uh, the reasons or the why before you learn the answer. So let me discuss. Under the law on contract, there are three uh, types of contracts. The first one is what we call as the consensual contract. The second one is what we call as the formal contracts. And the third one is what we call as the real contract. So the first one, consensual contract, these are contracts that are created by mere consent of the parties. That's why it's called consensual contracts. You already experience this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, consensual contracts, mere consent, um, that includes you buying food at the fast food restaurant. Restaurant, That's a sales contract. That's you when you buy uh, drinks at 7-Eleven or in a convenience store. That's a sales contract. You're entering into a contract already. And then when you go out and eat at a restaurant, you're entering into a uh, service contract wherein you are serviced by the restaurant. So in all of these situations, take note, not one of them um, uh, made you first sign a contract before uh, being able to buy or be serviced by them because mere consent creates the con that contract. The second uh, form of contract is real, a uh, formal contracts or contracts that require formalities. That is, this is the time when the contract has to be in some for in some kind of a form. That's why it's called a formal contract. So the form usually is the bond paper or the uh, how do you say this, the long bond paper or legal paper. However, there's really absolutely no rule that the contract has to be in a bond paper. It just says that the contract has to be in writing. That's why um, contracts can be written uh, in a Manila paper in a uh, Japanese paper, in any kind of paper. The only requirement is that it is in writing. And if you write it on those kinds of paper, then it is the writing. And then there are some contracts that, that their formalities require that the contract be notarized, okay? Particularly if this relates to real property or lands, buildings, and the like, real properties. Um, so these are formal uh, contracts. The third one is the um, real contracts, R-E-A-L contracts. In a real contract, in order to perfect or create the contract, there must be some form of delivery. Delivery. For instance, a loan contract will only become valid if the actual amount uh, being loaned is given to the borrower. If the borrower does not receive a single centavo from the uh, loan contract, even if that contract is signed and notarized, that contract will still be not valid because the main requirement for its validity is that the actual amount of being uh, the, the amount being borrowed is delivered. Now, take a guess: which of the three is the employment contract? I'll give you a clue. In the provinces. Think of uh, small stores where you have tinderas, okay? Think of a, how do you say this, uh, grow, uh, a small uh, variety store or even a um, store selling bicycle parts, tricycle parts, uh, tires, and the like. So think of all of these stores where we have our tinderos and tinderas. Do you think they have employment contract? Most of them will probably not have any form of employment contract, but does that mean that they are not employees of those stores? I'll give you one more. Think of the wet market. You have 
uh, how do you say this, uh, people working as a, a fisherman in a uh, fishing boat or um, a person who cuts fishes and then, uh, how do you say this, uh, cleans them or the, again, tindera, tindera, the wet market wherein uh, they are hired to sell the products. Do you think they have employment contracts? Okay, again, most of people say that they don't have employment contracts, but even if they don't have employment contracts, does that mean that they are not employees, those who hired them? So there, uh, that is the reason why under the labor code, um, an employment contract may be formed, organized or created by mere consent of the parties. So it is a number one type of contract, a consensual contract. Mere consent can create a, an employment contract uh, relationship. Okay. So if it is a consensual contract, then I already answered the question, the main question, whether it is it required to be notarized. The answer is it is not required to be notarized because the essence to be, uh, at the beginning is that the unemployment contract is a consensual contract. Mere consent already creates it. So whether or not you have a paper right, uh, uh, in the writing contract or not, it does not mean that uh, you do not have an employment arrangement with a particular employer. That is why, by the way, if I may add, uh, uh, employees who do not have employment contracts may and still and can file a labor complaint against the employer. That employee just simply needs to prove the employment relationship through other means, such as a payslip, a company ID, and other uh, documentation that can show that he or she is an employee or was an employee of that employer. So to go back to the question again, is it required for an employee when, for an employment contract to be notarized to be valid? The answer is no. Uh, because again, an employment contract is a consensual contract that can be created by mere consent. Now, what is the reason now why people or why companies, businesses, organizations, and offices notarize their employment contracts? The notarization part of employment contract is really more for evidentiary purposes, for evidence purposes. You'll be surprised. There are many employees who have, um, how to say this, uh, uh, said or uh, claimed that it was not their signatures in the employment contract, particularly if it becomes an issue in a labor complaint, meaning they falsely claim, they lie, they deny their signature in the employment contract. So this is where notarization comes in. If a document is not notarized, the one uh, offering it as proof in a legal case will be required to show uh, uh, proof that the signature of the persons there are their signatures and that these are not falsified. Meaning the uh, one showing the, offering the piece of evidence of document as proof will be the one who will be required to uh, hire the services of a, of a specialist, uh, like a, an NBI or a PNP, uh, expert witness who will testify that the signature of the particular person is that of uh, that signatory versus a notarized document. In a notarized document for purposes of a legal case, the signatures therein are presumed to be that of the persons whose signature appears on the name. Now, it will if it will be disputed that their signatures are not theirs, it now becomes the responsibility of that particular person. In our case, the employee it will be the uh, responsibility of the employee to show proof that his or her signature was falsified in that document. So the responsibility is uh, changed. It now becomes the uh, responsibility of the one uh, denying the validity of his signature in the employment contract to show proof. It is important uh, in this situation, in this legal case, because a notarized document will create a presumption that the signatures on those documents are 
uh, valid. Because remember, in the process of notarizing a document, the notary public, the lawyer who has a special license to be notary public is required to ask the genuineness and uh, how to say this, uh, the free, the willingness or the uh, free will on the part of the uh, signatory, whether or not they actually signed the documents freely, willfully, voluntarily, and that they were not coerced. Okay, so I hope this uh, uh, clarifies the topic on whether or not notarization is required for employment contracts. Okay, if you find this educational, instructive, and informative, feel free to uh, share, subscribe, like, and of course, ring the bell for notification. If you want to learn more uh, about labor law, feel free to join our membership at Labor of PH. And of course, we have an in-depth learning, a six-month in-depth learning uh, on labor law, wherein I teach you labor law uh, as how it is taught in law schools to law students through our masterclass. Feel free to sign up. Okay, see you.